Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. God, to whom all hearts open, all hearts speak, and to whom no private thing is hid, cleanse the intents of our hearts by your gracious gift, that we may love you completely and praise you wholly. Amen. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? 
Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you to God. Let us read responsively from Psalm 105, breaking at the asterisk. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes, there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked, and quails appeared, and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock, and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of all the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Alleluia. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee.
gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing aisle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you will also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go out into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the, day, the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to them, one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Please be seated. Most of us watch television or movies. Many of us drive cars or ride in cars or buses or things that get us from A to B. And all of these things, like so much in our lives, costs money. Sound systems cost money. All of these things are, are valuable and say something about what, they va what we value. Some of these things are, are the stuff we pay for just because we need them. Some of them are things that we buy because they bring us pleasure. And some of these things we buy or, or invest in or give out of our generosity or philanthropy allow us to co-create in a way with God a world that is more loving, more just, and more humane. We are connected to one another through a web of material things. Now, if you love to stream movies, as I do, this is pretty much the best time in the history of ever, because I can sit on my couch and watch anything at any time, all the good stuff, um, at a pretty reasonable rate. That's, that's really great news for me. 
But that has meant a major disruption to anybody who creates this content that I watch on the screen or, or on my phone. It's a, a, a disruption in how those people who create are compensated, which is why actors and writers have gone on strike. The United Auto Workers strike is different but the same, raising the question as we as a culture shift our understanding about mobility, not fast enough in my opinion, but at the same time, as we ask these questions, we also suddenly have to ask, the, what does it mean for the people who make the cars and the buses and the bicycles? How are they compensated? How do they provide for their families? And so they're on strike as well. All of this brings up the age-old question, what is fair? What is fair? Today's gospel passage challenges our good old common sense. It rubs up against our ingrained sense of fairness. Laborers are called to work in the morning, but then when another set of hands show up at the end of the day, how, do they get, the, uh, they get the exact same pay as the ones who started at daybreak, whose hands and backs were aching, who had worked all day in the scorching heat, who could have been doing something else all day, but weren't. And they get upset. What do they say? This isn't, this is not fair. It's not fair. And what, what's the phrase that an, a good economist would use? There seems to be a moral hazard here. Where, where if we keep doing this, the folk who show, would just stop showing up to work at the beginning of the day, and so suddenly no farms, no crops would be harvested, harvested nobody would get paid, and frankly, nobody would eat. This, is, this would be dangerous. Most of us hear this and we say, yes, okay, I, I think I see what Jesus is going for, and yet it still doesn't seem quite right. But the parable, the parable gets at a core teaching of the Christian faith. Even the ones who show up late in the day get the same thing. They get the same pay. They get the same benefits. They get the same grace. They get the same access to the divine, the same everlasting life. Now, a um, little, little prelude to where we're going, there's even a stewardship message here as we begin a little stewardship. So even, even um, let's, let's take an, as, a, as an example, Kaniala. Let's say that you and I walk into church and you give you give vast amounts of your own wealth, 10%, 20% of all of your Tesla holdings. And, and, and I throw in maybe a 10 or, or once or twice a month. Morgan is not going to play any louder for you than she does for me. Uh, you are not going to receive the top shelf wine at communion, and I'm going to give the, the, bon the, the discount stuff. We all get the good stuff. That's the whole point. Sorry to put you on the spot. That would seem ludicrous if we, if we sort of divide it up based on something like that. Would just seem nuts, wouldn't it? But when we think about wages and days working in the field under that hot sun, it really doesn't seem fair. But you know what? It isn't fair. It isn't fair. God isn't fair. Now, I don't mean that in the same way that you might have heard a parent tell you that life isn't fair when, when you didn't make the basketball team or, or a friend moved away or something broke your heart. That, that means something different. That just means that, that life, you know, what, what do we say? It is what it is. That life is disinterested and, and really less than fair, if anything. So fairness implies a sense of parity. 
that we get what we deserve, what we earn, what we work for, insofar as it relates to what other people got. But that is not God's fairness. Rather, and this is what the parable is all about, God loves and creates in a way that transcends our sense of fairness, which is always going to be hampered by our limited human vision. Fairness takes the situation as it is, where we, we assume a sense of scarcity and tries to make the best of it. Fairness raises the ceiling to a certain level of how we should relate to one another. But in God's imagination, that's the baseline. And that really we should be going so much farther beyond that as we figure out how to relate to one another and how we make sure that each and every one of us is given the opportunity to grow into the fullness of who God created each and every one of us to be. So, to my mind, God is not fair, and thank God for that. The laborer, he has what he needs. He has work. He has enough for the day. And that sense of enough is what could ground his relationship with God. And that, dear friends, is what abundance really looks like. Abundance. Not overflowing barns or, or stock portfolios that think we can buffer against whatever uh, volatility life throws at us, but rather abundance is the trust that we place in God at the beginning of the day, the trust that we know that God will give us what we need and more. But that more is not more stuff, it's not more wealth, but rather it's the joy that comes from knowing and trusting that God has provided for us and will continue to provide for us. But that's not what happens to the laborer. He just gets mad, doesn't he? Right? Rather than experiencing the joy of knowing that he had what he needed, he just gets grumpy. He gets frustrated. This labor, it turns out, he may be right about fairness, but he is wrong about abundance. He agreed to a wage that was enough. And the reality of these other workers showing up all throughout the day in no way changed that. So now he's just up in his head. And we know what happens when we get up in our head and we start kind of thinking, ooh, I wish I had that, and ooh, I think I deserve that. But the landowner says, did you not get what you need? Is it for you to decide how I run my farm? Do you think that your rules are my rules? And then, and this was, the, this was the real burn, why are you jealous because of my generosity? Comparison, the old saying goes, is the thief of joy. Isn't that true? To find joy and experience God's abundance, I think what we have to do is recalibrate our material lives to a deeper sense of enough. And that's a story we find time and time again in Scripture. When the Israelites were wandering through the desert, no, they were grumpy. And they were through the wilderness, rather. They were grumpy. They were mistrustful and tired and probably just desperate for a place where they could take a shower and charge their phones. They cried out to God who gave them what? Enough for the day. Enough. That's it. Enough for the day. Flaky bread, an almost ephemeral meal that showed up with the morning dew and would not last. Some quails that wandered into their camp. Not a great feast, nothing that would weigh them down, nothing they could throw in their bags or in their cooler and pull along, but rather enough for the day. An old Buddhist monk used his cup of tea to describe it. Please don't fill my cup too high, he said, because then it would just slosh over and burn my hand. 
or if you filled it all the way to the top. I might have more tea, but do those few extra sips really change my experience of having the tea? And more to the point, once I do that, I've got to spend all of my focus and energy keeping that tea from spilling over, and suddenly I'm not enjoying the tea anymore, am I? But this is about, about far more than tea, or quails, or even a day's pay. It's what Ched Myers called Sabbath economics, where we turn our ideas of fairness upside down, where the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Remember what the economists called this? Moral hazard? The sense that if everybody just gets paid the same no matter when they showed up, that nobody would show up for a good day's work? Where then is the cry of moral hazard when workers cannot pay for groceries, while top management is paid a king's ransom? What is moral hazard if not cheap goods that raid natural resources while keeping the hands that assemble them in poverty? Our economy is changing before our eyes. And so many of us, every time we pick up our phones, are creating reams of valuable data that advertisers and corporations can take straight to the bank. And yet, the policy that lifted children out of poverty, remember $500 for every child, how fast that went away? That policy is the one that gets labeled a moral hazard. Where are the cries when we incentivize massive barns of wealth for some while we ignore those in the cold, just outside those barns? You give me fairness, and I'll respond that God isn't fair. God was never fair. God transcends fairness, which in our world turns out to be quite malleable and always seems to end up with some barns getting bigger and other folks getting colder. We've built our material world around something far different than enough for the day. And we've managed to turn God's infinite abundance into a very human zero-sum game. This is not God's way. This is not God's economy where fairness starts as a standard but soon can become a stumbling block if that's where we stop. In God's economy, there were two workers. There were actually many workers, and each of them had enough for the day. And that is where we begin. Teach us, we pray, not to be anxious about earthly things, about things passing away, but to love things heavenly. Teach us to know the meaning of enough. Over the coming five weeks, we'll ask you, to prayerfully consider how you might support the work and mission of Trinity Cathedral. You'll hear about ministry, and you'll hear about outreach, and musicians, and choirs, and congregational life. What I want you to think about in this time is not just what is enough, but what level of giving will help you to rest in God's abundance. We talk about financial giving. We talk about giving of time and skills and all the things, the abundance that God has showered on you. But what level of giving of all of this will help you to rest in that abundance, to go from being jealous of what others have or bitter for what you may well have earned to being content with what God has provided for you, to have the right amount of tea in your cup so that you can enjoy that tea properly. To find joy and experience God's abundance. Find your enough 
and love the world from that place. Amen. Our service continues on page 8 as we profess our faith together. We believe in God who creates all things, who embraces all things, who celebrates all things, who is present in every part of the fabric of creation. We believe in God as the source of all life, who baptizes this planet with living water. We believe in Jesus Christ, who suffers with the poor, the malnourished, and the refugees, who loves and cares for this world. And we believe in Jesus Christ, the seed of life, who came to reconcile and renew this world and everything in it. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, who moves with God, and who moves among and with us today. We believe in everlasting life in God. For our deepest and most holy longings, we pray, renew us, O God. For all who wander, who hunger, who thirst, renew us as people of service and compassion. For this planet, our home, renew our will to be healers of creation. For this and every nation, renew in all people the will for good and the longing for peace. For those whom we hold in our hearts, especially Sue, Laura, Paul, Karen, Tony, Deborah, Charlotte, Lori, Jim, Nancy, Stuart, Tim, Tanya, David, Paula, Morgan, Arlena, William, Jason, and Shimona. We pray for loved ones who have recently died and for their families, especially Kathy Geary, and Eli Stein. We pray for U.S. military personnel and for their families. We pray for our companions in the Diocese of Belize and the Diocese of Tanga, Tanzania. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Barnabas Church, Bay Village, St. Thomas Church, Berea, St. Matthew's Church, Brexville, St. Andrew's Church, Cleveland. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the churches in the Diocese of Ahuada, Nigeria. We continue to pray for the health of our presiding bishop, Michael B. Curry. We pray for the Peace, Justice, and Mercy mission team as they cultivate opportunities for us to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. We pray for the individuals and families affected by the deadly flooding in Libya and earthquake in Morocco. We pray for those who have recently died, including Kenny McCullough, uncle of Matt McCullough. We offer blessings on those celebrating birthdays this week. Eric Funston, Carol Grassgreen, Bruce Holloway, Jennifer Rich, Cynthia Reese, Amy Wentz, and Corrine Wheeler. Bless these and all creation with your goodness and renew our trust in your love. Amen. Amen. Accept the fervent prayers of your people, O God. In, your multitude of, in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you, also with you. Peace be with you. Sorry to, sorry to put you on the spot. I hope that's okay. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's, this is like SeaWorld. You're in the splash zone. You're in the first few rows. Good morning and welcome. I was just uh, joking with Kaniala, who didn't know he was going to be in the sermon. The first few rows, as far as I'm concerned, it's like SeaWorld. You might get splashed or brought in at any point. So just, just be warned. Can, can you all in the transept here, as it worked a little better? Excellent. Thank you to Sam for, for your extra care in bringing that, uh, getting that working. We, I'm so glad to have you all here. Welcome uh, those of you who are joining us online. Welcome those of you here in person. We, we welcome the Abundant Table musicians back. Congra please, congratulations on getting married. Blessings, Morgan. We're so happy for you. And two weeks of marriage, and you get a round of applause. All right? Excellent. Good. We are beginning our stewardship campaign. This is a season uh, where we invite you not only to participate in the ministry in the coming year, but this is a celebration of Trinity's ministry. There's so much wonderful, uh, so many wonderful things happening, uh, not only events in the coming six, seven weeks, uh, but also lots of things in min our ministries that are really blooming, and I invite you to be a part of it in any way you can, and I invite you to prayerfully consider how you can be uh, share financially to help support that. Uh, next Saturday, we, uh, I invite you to something called the Diocesan Innovation Day, where we're going to be led through churches all over the diocese. We'll be at Bellwether Farm. People from these churches get to share different ideas, good ideas, crazy ideas. What is, what's the phrase? It's crazy enough. It just might work. But you know what? This is a great season of creativity and innovation. Uh, and so I invite you, if you'd like to participate in that, uh, check out our, our e-news or our website or the diocesan e uh, website to find out about that. October 2nd through 10th is a week of action in opposition to the death penalty in Ohio. It's sponsored by Support Ohio and Cessop Executions and the No Death Penalty Ohio Coalition. If you would like to go to Columbus, Catherine Smythe Zeitz is a leader of Episcopal Peace Fellowship. She'll be going. That's on October uh, 2nd, next Sun, excuse me, a week from Sunday, 9th and 10th, um, two, weeks, two weeks from today. Um, or if you'd like to submit a prayer that will be read on the Capitol ste steps, uh, as well as we'll find a way, some of those prayers we'll share in liturgy. Some of them, Adrian and I will read. Uh, we're going to be doing some, a video that we'll share with you um, in October as well. So if you'd like to prepare a, play, a prayer for uh, that week of action against the death penalty, you can send it to me or to Catherine Smythe Zeitz. Finally, remember to mark on your calendar that Becca Stevens is going to be with us at Trinity, uh, an incredible human being, priest, and social entrepreneur who created Thistle Farms as a way to lift women in Nashville uh, out of addiction and trafficking. And we'll hear her story as well as meet a number of graduates from the program who now work uh, as a part of Thistle Farms to create health and wellness products. So bring your Christmas list, lots of good stuff to buy, but also are going to tell a, a really important story. Well, welcome. If you're joining us for the first time, we are, what's that? Oh, the forum, the forum, of course. Sorry, join us immediately afterwards. I hit my three announcement li limits, so sometimes I have to be reminded. We have a really important forum happening after the service. 
We're, we're going to be sharing the work of our racial inventory work that's been going for several years. This is a first step, an early step, but one that takes a long time and a lot of intention to really look at our history and our story and say, as we seek to become the church that looks like the, the, the community that we live in, what barriers have been in the way? Where have we not been a church of equality? Where, have, uh, where has this been, frankly, a, the Episcopal Church has struggled with being a primarily white church? And how do we begin to talk about that? And how do we look at our history and say we have not been the diverse church that we wish that we had been? Where do we go from here? So we're going to report, we're going to hear from the racial inventory uh, committee team about their work thus far and talk about what some next steps might be. So I really hope you'll join us. It's been a great uh, conversation thus far. Please come and join us uh, immediately afterwards. Is it A, B, or C, D? It's now in CD. Go that way. Go that way and follow the sound of great conversation and you'll find us. It's now in where? AB. It's now in AB. If you are joining us for the first time, we welcome you and we're so glad you're here. You'll find around here in the cathedral, you'll find at the base of many of the pillars information about Trinity. I also encourage you to fill out this newcomer card if you wish. That way we can follow up with you, get to know you a little better. You can just drop it in the offering plate as it goes by or chat with a member of the clergy on your way out the door. And we're so glad that you're here. If you're online, you'll find much of that same information up at the top of the website. Is anybody celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this Sunday? Please, I invite you to come forward if you, if you feel like coming, being on the hot seat for just a moment. Tom, what day is your birthday? This Friday? Happy birthday. Brant and Marie, anniversary? What day? And how many years? Wait, wait, do we need a minute? Okay. 32 years. Let us pray. Wait, they get a round of applause. If two weeks gets a round of applause, <laughs> 32. But remember, what did the gospel teach us? Doesn't matter how many years, it's the same grace, right? <laughs> See, this is stuff you can use. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Tom as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, you have created us in your image. Look mercifully on Brant and Marie who come seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 I invite you to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Gracious God, source of life abundant. But be from before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace you look with favor upon Mary your willing servant that she might conceive and bear a son Jesus the holy child of God living among us Jesus loved us he broke bread with outcasts and sinners healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor he yearned to draw all the world to himself yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to, be complete upon the, to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life, to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O oh God, as supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. I invite you to raise your hands together. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ poured himself out for us. Guys, we share the same mind, the same love in one body.
I've got joy. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. May the God who creates life, the Savior who loves life, and the Spirit who is the fire of life bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of God's Spirit. Thanks be to God.